These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So let's think about uh, the energy levels that the electrons uh, are placed into uh, and orbitals. So oftentimes a good way to symbolize orbitals is with dashes. Although again, maybe your instructor draws boxes, but you can use boxes or dashes to indicate different orbitals. And now uh, let's start putting the electrons in here. By the way, how many electrons can we put in each orbital? Two. 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 That's right. All right, so let's put in our first step. And what's the significance of the fact that I drew these dashes below these dashes? What does that mean? Difference of energy. Yeah, energy difference. So these are lower in energy. Does that mean they're more or less stable? Uh, more, stable. more stable. So would we say they're happier or less happy? Happier. Happier. So actually, in, in chemistry and science, things want to have low energy. Things prefer to have low energy. And now if we start putting the electrons in, we use the Aufbau principle, which is that we try to put things where they'd be happiest, at the lowest energy. So we could put the first electron here. Now, where would I put the next electron? Well, I wouldn't put it up here, um, because uh, that's higher energy, and these down here. Um, well, by the way, so um, what's the relationship between the energy of this orbital and the energy of this orbital? What's the relationship between uh, their energies? Uh, so, for example, um, is this one bigger energy or smaller energy? No, that's a bigger, oh, bigger, bigger energy. Bigger energy. Okay, maybe that seems like a weird question. What's the relationship between the energy of these two orbitals? They're the same? same. Yeah, they're the same. So, it should go, maybe, uh, I should have pointed out that if things are on the same level, that means they have the same energy. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not going to put the next electron up here, because that would be higher energy than it needs to have. But should I put the same, the next electron in the same orbital as the first, or a different one? Different one. Different one. Maybe we talked about this a little bit last time. And also, it turns out they should have the same spin. We won't talk too much about spin, but things can have either, say, up or down spins. So I'm drawing these both with up spin. Which direction you draw this spin is arbitrary. So this could have been down, but then this one should be down too. This is Hunt's rule. Hunt's rule says that if you have multiple orbitals with the same energy, um, that um, you, well, our electron, do electrons like to be closer or far from other electrons? Far. Far. Why is that? Because they have the negative charge. Yeah, they're all negative. So negatives repel each other. So it kind of makes sense that this electron doesn't want to be in the same orbital as this one. It wants to try to get a, a distant from it, so to speak, by going into this orbital. Mm -hmm. We won't try to explain why these have to have the same spin. I think we talked about these ideas last time. Okay, so um, here's two things that electrons don't like. Electrons don't like to be paired up with other electrons, and they don't like to be put up into a higher energy. So where should I put the next electron? Well, I can put it here. But where should I put the fourth electron? On top of the next level. Up here? Oh, no, no, we need to pair next those down, to because we need to finish the lowest levels first. Yeah, remember the electrons don't like to increase their energy, so we can still continue to put electrons down at this lower energy. Now notice that now there's a trade-off. Um, this electron isn't that happy to be, ha to be paired up with this electron here, but it's better than having this big increase in its energy. So it's not that happy to be paired up, but it's better than having this big increase in its energy. Then the next electron would go here and then here, and only now that all of these are full would I start putting electrons up here. Mm -hmm. Then the next electron would go here, not here, using Hunt's rule again. Then the next electron would go here, and only at the end are we forced to start pairing these up. So this is the general rule for putting electrons in. We're going to see for crystal field theory, though, there's a kind of exception to that. Or at least sometimes there's an exception. Because sometimes in crystal field theory, the two levels of energy are very close to each other. Here we had a big energy difference between these sets of orbitals. But sometimes in crystal field theory, there's only a small difference in energy. So, can I ask a question? Just, I don't know yeah. if it's a okay, like, good question or not. But, like, crystal field we use only for transitional metals. 
That's right. Okay. That's right. So crystal field theory is uh, a model. It's a model that we can use for um, figuring out the electron configuration. And it, uh, different models, so as in, in a philosophical point of view, models aren't true or false. They're just sometimes useful and sometimes not useful. Well, the crystal field theory is useful for transition metals. Oh. That's right. That's why when you were studying the representative main group elements in the first semester, you never talked about crystal field theory. Right. So, uh, but as we, we already saw last time that there's um, some complications and differences that transition metals have new features that the main group elements didn't have. Okay. Uh, well, here's some new uh, things that we're gonna have to talk about. Oh, we haven't gotten into the new stuff yet. Um, so let's say that these two levels are the same, but that's a good point. Crystal field theory is applied to transition metals. Now, the key thing here is that these two levels of energy are very close to each other. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to put this electron here, then this electron here, then this electron here. But now, where should I put the fourth electron? Well, remember that there's no way the fourth electron is going to be super happy. It has a choice between two evils. One evil would be if it got paired up with this electron, because they don't like to get paired up, because then the orbital is kind of crowded, so to speak. Remember, the electrons are unsociable. They, don't like, to be, they like to be have nice, roomy orbitals where they're by themselves. They don't like to have crowded orbitals. You guys, uh, sometimes Hunt rule is explained using um, the way people sit on a bus. You know, oftentimes in a bus, there's two seats next to each other, but no one likes to sit next to everybody else, right? So um, if the first person comes in, the next person isn't going to sit next to them, but they're going to sit over here by themselves, and the next person is going to sit over here by themselves, and it's only if all these seats are all filled up that people um, bite the bullet and they're willing to sit next to somebody else. Okay, so um, th this is kind of the analogy here. So the electron doesn't really want to go here because it would be paired up. Also, though, the electron doesn't really want to go here because it would be higher in energy, and there's a trade-off. But in this case, which one is, is going to be worse? Well, notice that these are very close in energy. Because these are so close in energy, w which is that going to tend to favor? It would be go up yeah. higher energy because it's uh, not far from each other, so it's That's going right. to jump up there. This way, this still gets to have an orbital all to itself. It still gets to sit by itself on the bus. It has to pay a price in energy, but only a very small price. Now, this is the new thing that we've never seen before in the course. Previously in the course, the orbitals were always far enough away in energy that we always filled up all the orbitals down below before we opened up any orbitals up above. But now we're going to see some cases where the energies are so close to each other that sometimes it's better to go up to a higher energy to avoid pairing up the orbitals. So these two pictures encapsulate the difference between the cases we talked about. If the orbitals are, have a big difference in energy, then it's better to pair the electrons up rather than moving up into this much higher energy level. For the fourth, so notice that in this case, it's the fourth electron that makes the difference. Whereas um, in this case, um, the electrons are very close to each other, uh, energy levels are very close to each other, and you're willing to pay the small price in energy to avoid having to pair up the electrons. Mm -hmm. So now, where should I put the fifth electron? Um, go next window. Up above, again. Yeah. Still, if we were willing to put this one here, we might as well put this one here. And then the sixth electron would go? To the next one. Up here, good. And now, how about the seventh electron? To go so down and back and pair up. Now they have to be paired up. Well, if they have to be paired up, is it better to be paired up at high or low energy? Low, low. Well, it better to be paired up at low energy. So only now do we start pairing them up down here. And then it would go like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the new feature that we're going to be seeing here in crystal field theory. So let's try to get down to um, the cases a little bit more. 